No, ma'am. This call is now. Is the space visible, ma'am? Uh, yes, it's still connecting. Ma'am, you are audible, ma'am. Yes, okay. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. So we were talking about this uh, psychology. So, uh, Come to the first slide. So I told you about very basics about the psychology. So psychology generally like this. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, your voice is breaking, ma'am. You're not able to uh, hear you clearly, ma'am. We are not able to hear you clearly, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Now we are audible, ma'am. Is it clear yes, now? Yes, ma'am. It is clear now, ma'am. So, uh, I was just telling you uh, about the psychology. So, basically, this is a word which was derived from the Greek word. And it includes psycho plus logos where psycho means soul whereas logo means science so basically it is a science of soul there are different steps that we need to follow when we are studying the psychology so we are studying basically the soul you have to reach to that level where we can study the soul of people okay so it is about studying the mind first we can study the mind of people and then we study the consciousness of people and once we have understood understood the consciousness of people we reach to that level where we can start understanding the behavior of people and once we will start understanding behavior of people the next step or the next level will come when we start understanding the soul the soul which is there uh, which is existing in that person basically so in all we can say that it is it is something which is scientific in nature and we call psychology as science because it is a systematic study of observation and events or we can say it is the uh, study of observable behavior of people. This behavior can be unlearned behavior. This behavior can be learned behavior. Now we can say that behavior is unlearned because we are studying uh, something which includes re reflexes. How the person is reacting to that situation which was not existing, pre-existing basically. How their uh, psychological process actually work. How their instincts work. But the behavior is called learned behavior. Why, why you call it as learned behavior? Because 
sometimes the behavior is acquired through practice when we are moving ahead in some kind of profession if we are doctor if we are teacher there are certain behavior that we have inculcated we have developed because we have practiced that behavior in today's world psychology is basically termed as a scientific method of collecting data about individual and group to analyze and predict their behavior okay we generally collect the data from group of people it is not about one single person it is about group of people from where we collect the data we analyze the data and we finally uh, give our prediction about uh, the behavior we try to generalize the results that we are getting okay so uh, psychology as a term is defined by different psychologists okay so woodworth and marquis defined psychology as a scientific study of activities of individual in relationship uh, relationship to his environment so basically the behavior of behavior of a person is extracted from uh, the environment in which he or she is like we behave differently when we are at home but we behave differently when we are in class okay so the environment in which we are it affects or it according to that our behavior changes okay while uh, nl mun defined psychology in today's world it is concerned itself with the scientific investigation of behavior so there are sciences which are involved or which are applied to study the psychology of a person okay please come to the next slide uh, okay so there are different branches of psychology some are uh, and these are majorly categorized into two parts one is basic or we can say a pure branch of psychology or pure pure psychology while other is applied psychology pure branch or basic psychology includes abnormal psychology experimental psychology general psychology developmental and social psychology while when we are talking about applied uh, branch of psychology it includes personality health forensic industrial clinical and learner psychology so our today's focus will be on learner psychology related to students which are there in higher education college or university system okay please come to the next slide so we'll be focusing on learner psychology which is a branch of psychology which is concerned with scientific study of human learning okay so here we are uh, further if we want to extend this further uh, about learner psychology we can say that th this can also be known as education psychology okay these are the studies uh, or we can say these are the theories okay which 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 are generally applied or these are the concepts which are applied to some psychological setting this is done to understand the behavior of student and as a teacher i need to understand my own behavior so as i can handle my classroom pretty well it will help me in managing my classroom in a better manner okay this applies definitely in the classroom and after classroom as well so as a teacher whatever i'm saying in classroom or whatever uh, thoughts i'm sharing with my students in classroom they will keep on they will take away these thoughts beyond classroom or uh, after um, now there take student his or her potential students is the same be similar five finger uh, in our all, all the students are in our class same level difference in physical age standing is knowledge they have different culture they different different when we are psychology and this best out of the so that she can learn and as a teacher this is my responsibility uh, to the best out of and so that learn as possible in there are psychologists who have learners their work grow this as the learner psychology is an experience from old it is not that those you know when the 
able to feelings through okay Excuse there me, are on this to study to study Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, again your voice is breaking. Ma'am, we are not able to hear you, ma'am. Till now we ha uh -huh. we didn't have any problem, but but just now your voice is cracking. Ma'am? Yes, 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 please. Uh, yes, ma'am. It is a science of learning. So it is not that today we have given or generalized some results based on the uh, experiment that, that we have done on a one set of, uh, you know, students. It may be, it, or it the main same forever. So we need to keep on doing this experiments because with time there are number of things, number of factors that affect the behavior is changing. Skinner also mentioned that it is a branch of psychology which deals with teaching and learning. When we talk about learner psychology, so basically the focus is on teaching and learning. How effective our teaching can be and how best we can give to our students so that they can learn best out of it. Okay, please come to the next slide. So uh, when we are talking about learner psychology with regard to teaching and learning, there are a number of ways through which uh, this teaching and learning is affected or the psychology which affects the teaching and learning. Why we are doing, why we are studying this psychology basically. Now the purpose behind this is to know the learner first. So the first and foremost duty for me as a teacher is to understand my learner, my student pretty well. Okay, how he is behaving. I need to understand each one of the student if I really want to give best in my class. Okay, I need to select and organize the subject matter of learning experiences or learning experiences that my students are getting. This can be done by getting the feedback and this can be done on the regular basis. It is not so that I can get the feedback only at the end of the semester or maybe uh, when my class will end. During my class also when I'm teaching, okay, I can keep on taking the feedback from the students. I can also, uh, uh, this is also studied to suggest the art and techniques of learning as well as teaching. So it is not only so that only the students need to work when it comes to the learning. As a teacher also, I need to work on the methods that I'm using in my class to make learning uh, an effective exercise. They can learn at ease. They can enjoy learning in my class. Okay, I need to arrange such situation, such environment so that this will enhance the learning experience of my students in my class. Okay, I need to acquaint him or her with the mechanism of heredity and environment. I need to make them accommodated in the environment of the class. Okay, basically this is a place or I can say classroom is a place where the learning and where we can give the learning environment to the students in such a way that the students are not hindered by any disturbing behavior. You will always find such students in class which may be very naughty, may be very talkative, may be sad. Okay, or uh, maybe extremely happy or excited. So there are different, you know, notions which the students are going on. So me as a teacher, I need to manage my class. I need to study the behavior of my classroom. I need to make some balance. Okay, I need to manage the behavior uh, in the classroom, which is very important for classroom management there. Okay, it is not always so that I can do uh, or I can manage my classroom by punishing people. Okay, or by recording. Okay, so these are not 
the only methods through which I can manage the classroom. But I inculcate such a behavior by way of which the students can gain most of the classroom. When they are coming to classroom, they should get that feeling that they are going to get something from the classroom. Okay, and this too I have to done while maintaining the discipline in the classroom. I need not be that strict that students will not come and share what they want to come uh, share with me. I should not be that relaxed at the same time that they will become very naughty and I'm not able to share my topic with which I am there in the class. Okay, for this I need to keep on rendering the guiding services in my class. Okay, that for that very purpose also I need to study the psychology. Then I can also help in evaluation and assessment. Okay, there was a time uh, when this subjective assessment or summative assessment was done. Okay, when the exams used to held after the semester ends or the year end only. Okay, but now we we are supposed to do the regular assessment. Okay, so throughout the session, throughout the semester, before this end term exams, we take midterm exams from the student. So to understand their Okay, uh, we need to take like uh, we can involve different active. Um, uh, we can inv involve our students into different activities from time to time. Okay, so that we can also get the feedback that how much my student is learning in class. So this can also be a method of evaluation and assess assessment that can be done on the regular basis. And we need to solve the classroom problems. And for that also, we need to understand the behavior of students. So it may be possible that two boys are fighting in the class. Then how? What are their problems? Because maybe the problem is very minor for me as a teacher, but the problem may be very major for the student's point of view. So I need to understand their feelings also. I cannot, you know, just ignore them. Okay. So uh, I need to know about myself also. As a teacher, I need to understand myself and my students pretty well. I need to motivate the teaching and learning pattern that is there in the class. We need to keep on introduce uh, something different in class because if you are teaching regularly, like the, um, or some using some monotonous ways of teaching, like just showing the PPTs and keep on speaking and not involving students. After some time, they are going to lose the interest in class. So just to have that. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, please come to the next slide. Today, the network is disturbing me a lot. Okay, then learning and learner psychology. So what do we mean by the term learning? Basically, learning by all means is an attempt to mold and shape the behavior of students. So this should be as a teacher my aim that I, by the end of the semester or by end of the term, I can or I should be able to mold or shape the behavior or the way the students are behaving. It may be possible when the students are coming to my class for the first time, they are very naughty or they may be very shy they are not ready to share what they want to share uh, but i have to change slowly and steadily 
as a teacher this is my art this is beauty of teaching that how we can change the behavior of students this is something practically happening in my class as well uh, like we are teaching in a central university so the students are coming from different backgrounds when i say background the cultural difference is there and of course the language is a big problem because people are coming or students are coming all uh, from different states so language is a big problem in our uh, class but this is my duty my responsibility and this is my talent as a teacher that how i am able to communicate with everyone in the class and i have to take all the students at the same level okay so learning basically aims to produce de desirable changes in students okay for making them develop 360 degree i need to develop my student it, it is not only about just i'm going to the class and sharing the subject matter as a teacher it is my responsibility to uh, to model or to develop a good citizen a good person basically okay so the essential knowledge and skills to do with a job satisfactorily is supplied by learner psychology as peels put this in the following words he said this uh, in the following words like learner psychology helps the teacher to understand the development of pupil our, uh, on our students and according to them if we need to change our curriculum if we need to change the way we are teaching okay if we need to change the environment of the classroom if we need, need to change the social setup in our um, university we should do it because our focus the, uh, earlier what happened we used to design the curriculum that this should be taught at this level and we are just teaching as a teacher uh, just teaching the syllabus in the class but now the the things have changed okay now the students are kept in mind that what kind of students are coming to the course and what kind of uh, you know person will be going out after the uh, after completing that particular course so curriculum is organized in such a manner okay so recently as per nab 2020 there is a two credit course which is introduced uh, recently in this ug level wherein they have to work voluntarily and get themselves involved in society development okay so these are changes which we are we as a teachers are going to introduce in our classes okay so the focus will not remain only on books only on subjects the focus need to go beyond this okay a far beyond this so please come to the next slide so when we talk about the functions of learner psychology why do we actually or what are the results um, that we get if we apply this psychology in our classroom and this is done to afford the thorough knowledge of the nature of student so when we are applying this uh, you know studying the behavior of the student we get to know students deeply we can able to understand or we are able to provide them the best solution to their problems if they are facing one if not then at least we can guide them then how they can improve as a person so first of all we are able to understand our students it is done to provide an understanding of the nature aims and purpose of learning okay so i generally ask this to my students when they are coming to our class for the first time that why they have opted for this particular course what is the aim behind it because this make me understand that how this student is going to remain engaged in my class what input i can expect from this student in the class or how we can teach or how what pedagogy should, can i adopt so that i can give best out uh, best to my students so this make me understand the nature the aim and the purpose of learning accordingly we can design my class okay this is done to acquire familiarity with the technical vocabulary and to further understand and appreciate the scientific procedure by uh, by which the data of learner psychology are obtained okay so we can also get familiar with different kind of vocabulary we can understand these things also and we can best utilize this by giving best to our students it also provide a significant knowledge of development process okay which further emphasize upon the promotion guidance and control of mental and moral aspects of the students okay so as i said we are not just developing uh, the machines 
we are dealing with person uh, we are dealing with human being who has feelings okay who has thought process they have brain so we are able to understand the mental and moral aspects of the students and accordingly we can teach in our class it also helps us in providing uh, to provide an understanding of principle governing learning so the direction of learning can also be defined if we can understand the learner psychology it also helps to present the theory underlying the measurement and evaluation of mental abilities aptitudes achievement interest and personality organization so if we have studied the learner psychology or if we have understood the basic behavior of our students so we can you know um, evaluate them on the basis of various factors and accordingly we can guide them accordingly we can prepare our lessons so that they can get best from our class next slide please when we talk about psychology of learners so these are the areas which are concerned okay and uh, these are the problems that generally students are facing like how do children acquire skills when it, when we are talking about skills and how they can acquire the skill if we are talking about some subjects and when we go back to our school though uh, when we are talking about higher education th this is more of the practical knowledge that we are giving to students and the theoretical knowledge that um, school students are getting at that time they think of memorizing thing but when it comes to higher education we think of explaining the concept to our student so that the understanding will remain with them forever so okay, it is not about uh make them memorize things so at school level the students used to think that how we can improve the memory okay or can the memory be really improved when is the learning more effective so what time of the day you are taking your class what is the nature or what is the weather outside uh what is the environment like maybe when some some festival is around at that time the students are not very eager to listen to you they are not into that mood where they are ready to study the subject so there are different modes that you can take in uh, if, that you can use in that class to make it very you know um, interesting at that moment then what are different factors that helps the learning process so how we can improve uh, or what we can add in our teaching process so as the learning process can be included or if we are forgetting then why we are forgetting okay how we can measure the amount of learning so we are teaching equally to all the students but the learning is different for different students so okay, every student is not learning at the same pace or at the same level we cannot quantify the level of learning okay and are there any economic method to memorizing thing is there any way or is there any subsidized method through which we can remain or the content that we are sharing sh shall remain in our mind forever so there is the, the answer to all such problems are coming from the psychology of the learner the behavior of our students in the class that is why it is required to study them thoroughly when we are going to our class please come to the next slide then there are certain psychological problems which are faced by our students from time to time like procrastination so it is a habit Uh, under which the students are keep on delaying the things okay they are not ready to do it right now and they are keep on thinking that we will do it sometime later we will do it sometime later it may be because they are busy it may be because the learning process was not very was not very fruitful for them so there may be different reasons because of which the students are keep on delay, delaying the things that they need to do in class or maybe right after the class okay so which may lead to the bad score bad grades they may also fail in the subject so we need to understand again the psychology comes here we need to understand the behavior why we need to understand why he keep on lingering the things why he keep on delaying the things and if as a teacher i can help him or her out i should do it so that they can do their assignments well in time so that so that their understanding about the subject can also improve at times the perfectionism also um uh, taken as a problem okay we try to be
perfectly Mom, excuse me, mom. Yes, yes. Am I audible now? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Audible. So yes. So I was talking about this uh, perfectionism. So what happens? Hello. Yeah. So what happens when a person trying to be really perfect? They uh, at times they lead this situation may lead to depression because they want everything to be really perfect, but it is not always possible. So it may lead to some kind of uh, anxiety that may be there that may be created in the student. Okay, they will never feel satisfied. They will never feel happy. They will never feel that how worth it they are. Okay, so it may further lead their uh, productivity, uh, the fall in productivity. Okay, the efficiency in which they can work will fall. So we can guide our students that they should try. That is important. But output may be 100% or the results may be so perfect, may or may not be important because trying is something that we should focus on. We should not focus on the results that we are getting. Okay, then low self-esteem. Now, at times what happens that uh, uh, when we are teaching in class, we generally use English language because we want... Especially when we are talking about the students from commerce and management background, we generally feel that we should take our class in English because we need to develop our students in such a way that they will be able to face the world. Okay, so uh, they, but there are students who are coming from background where uh, they are not aware of uh, or they are not confident enough to speak uh, English. So what happened? They feel very low on their self-esteem okay but if they will keep it in their mind and will not work on it 
okay if they will keep the, the same thing in their uh, mind they, so it will start showing the sign of mental illness okay some mental issues will start will be uh, will be created if they keep this problem of low esteem in their mind so all we need to do as a teacher is we need to guide our student okay we need to motivate them that how they can improve okay uh in terms of their personality in terms of their presentation skills in terms of their speaking skills in terms of their learning skills as well so in order to uh, to make them improve their self esteem so they should not feel really low because it will also create some kind of stress they will start remaining lonely they will start remaining alone they are not you know freely uh, able to share what they are feeling with anyone and everyone okay so it may also lead to the situation which may further lead to anxiety and stress okay which will further started showing some kind of behavioral problem and ultimately it will affect their performance their learning okay they will start neglecting the basic hygiene they will um, you know uh, poor self care practices will be followed they st stop taking care of themselves physically mentally they will start eating um, unhealthy food okay which ultimately affect their performance as a student and as a person as i must say then weak communication sometime what happen we are not because the strength is large in class so what happened we are not able to directly communicate with the students okay because maybe the strength is 50 or 60 it is not possible in one hour class to communicate with each one of them okay but maybe in next class maybe in um, every class we should keep this in our mind that we should touch every student we should talk to every student if possible or maybe is maybe um, once in a week or so because this will help us in creating connection with our students okay because if we are not communicating well with our student it will again start affecting their academic process there you may definitely see that the students will um, face problem in understanding and expressing what they are feeling okay they will ultimately start avoiding attending your classes okay they may start feeling or uh, or facing difficulty in attempting the test or exams that you are scheduling ultimately the grades will fall and they will further fall into the problem of like stress depression or maybe self low esteem uh, self esteem uh, low self esteem etc okay so the conclusion is we need to get connected we need to study their behavior and we need to get connected with our students first please come to the next slide okay then there are certain areas that are covered by learner psychology or the psychology in the classroom so these are the things that we need to take care of in or i can say these are the elements which is actually covered under learner psychology the first and foremost or the most important factor or um, element is the learner because everything revolves up around the learner around our student okay so we need to know our student so that we can deal with their problems so that we can deal with them we can deal with the individual differences that we are able to face um, uh, in our students okay we need to understand understand their conscious as well as subconscious mind okay what is going on their mind and as a teacher when we when we connect with student individually we are able to understand their unconscious mind as well okay so we need to understand the characteristics of development and growth right from their childhood to adulthood so when we are develop when we are getting mature when we are moving ahead in our age we are attaining mental maturity as well so we need to understand this because in higher education system also the students are maturing or learning new things every new day okay they are like coming out of their houses for the first time after they did their 12th okay for for them it is like a freedom that they are getting for the first time so we need to keep this in our mind again we need to make balance okay then the second thing is learning process so once you have understand understood the behavior of your learner the next thing that we need as a teacher to be focus on the learning process that what kind of learning experience that may be provided to our student that they can be able to learn with ease okay their learning experience should be really good they can be able to remember they can be able to understand they may be able to perceive or most importantly we can make them uh, that they are able to 
solve the problems so we need to produce such students that they that they will become a problem solver rather than problem creators okay we need to inculcate thinking we need to keep on train them okay so all these can be covered under learning process so we need to focus on the learning process in all these aspects then the situation situation means again the classroom environment or the learning situation that we are able to give to our student basically okay so we need to focus um, in our classroom we need to give them such a environment where, the, where they can share what they are feeling without any fear okay we need to make that balance as i mentioned earlier also it is not always that we can motivate them by giving punish punishment and at the same time it is also not possible that we can able to reward them every time so we need to make make a balance in our class so that so that uh, uh, the the learning can be uh, best possible learning uh, can be given to our students okay the next is teaching situation so it is not only that the student has to make all the efforts as a teacher we need to make all, um, most of the efforts because we need to make learning easy through the teaching uh, pedagogy that we are following in our class okay we need to follow such ways while teaching that that can be accommodated by different students in spite of difference in their physical and mental age okay in spite of whatever mental level that they are in carrying in spite of whatever culture they are belonging to okay whatever past knowledge they are having whatever interest they are having we have to take all the students at the same level so it is it is the the art or i can say it is a talent of a teacher that how this teaching situation can be handled by a teacher to give the best learning experience to the learners and the next thing is evaluation of learning performance then what happened we need to uh, we we as a teacher are teaching in class the students are learning but ultimately we are in a formal education system and when we are in formal education system we need to evaluate this performance as well we need to understand that how much uh, our students are learning we need to develop the learners ultimately and for that purpose we need to keep on assessing them okay so that is why nowadays we are following this formative assessment system when we are for we are regularly evaluating the performance of the student okay then according to that we can guide them we can, we can counsel them as teachers last but the most again the most important element of learner psychology is the teacher okay so it is not so that we only need to understand the learner and other factors we as a teacher we need to understand ourselves as, as well we need to know ourselves as well okay what personality traits i should possess as a teacher is also important okay if uh, i am short tempered it won't go long okay i need to change my behavior when i'm handling class okay because there are different students which are there in the class so i need to check on my interest that i am having okay i need to check my attitude toward the demographics which is there in the class okay my characteristics for making my teaching effective i need to focus on that and as a teacher it is not so that we are free as a student things uh, think that teachers are not putting much efforts or teacher need not put any effort so we as a teacher are also going through different kind of stress this stress should not be passed on to our classes so how as a teacher i am able to handle my stress is important so i need to understand myself also when i am dealing with learner psychology uh, please come to the next slide now there are different methods one is observation method And the third one is experimental method. We will discuss these methods one by one. Uh, please come to the next slide. Okay. So uh, we'll talk about this uh, introspection method. So 
like introspection again it is a word which is derived from the latin language and it is a merger of two words which means intro plus aspection so basically intro means within inside aspection means looking so basically it means when we are talking about introspection it is mean when where the individual is looking into himself or herself so the very first thing when it comes to the psychology the first thing as a teacher or as a student i need to introspect myself okay the, so there are three steps we need to uh, keep in our mind when we are introspecting so first is during observation of uh, during the observation of external object the person being to ponder over his or her mental state so suppose we are looking at one thing okay so what kind of feeling i am getting when i'm seeing uh, one particular thing it may be possible that one thing which may be appearing very pleasing to someone else may not be uh, really looking good to me it may be happen the painting that may uh, look very bad to you is is appearing really good to me the song which may be very i'm enjoying one song it may be possible that other person is not enjoying that song so first of all i need to understand myself really well i need to introspect um, to attend so that i can attend i i can understand my own mind first in a systematic way right so the first thing is i need to observe myself completely the second thing once i observe myself that why i am feeling so i need to question myself like that okay so person begin to question working on his own mind so it is about checking myself first he keep on thinking and analyzing about his or her behavior why i am reacting like this at this situation why i am getting angry when the student is, students are not listening to me in the class how can i deal to the questions that are coming um, uh, or different questions that are coming from the students to me okay or what if my students are not submitting assignments on time how i am reacting and why i am reacting so uh, as a teacher i need to check myself okay then uh, the third step is to try to frame the law and condition of mental process okay in this case we need to think in terms of improvement of our reasoning and control of emotional stages so once we have understood that what is my behavior why i am behaving so the next step is to control that behavior if i understood that behavior is not appropriate in the class the same the same thing applies to the student as well if the student knows that he is being naughty in the class or he is disturbing the class he understood that he need to he is thinking about that the next step is he need to improve himself in these terms and as a teacher we need to help our students to improve this thing so this is how this introspection helps i i need to motivate my students to introspect themselves and as a teacher i need to introspect myself as well that is why we will we, we all will be able to come to the same stage or the same level okay then next okay the next is observation method okay so if i'll say in the words of good observation deals with the overt behavior of person in a appropriate situation okay so we are just observing we are looking into the behavior of our students in one particular situation suddenly you get into the class and you announce that i am going to take a test today observe how your students are reacting to that and suddenly you enter the class and uh, you announce that i'm not going to teach today today i'm we are going to play some kind of game a classroom game so observe that how your students are reacting to that and accordingly from time to time you can um, you know plan such activities which which break the monotony of the classroom which is some uh, which can make them enjoy the different things in the classroom so observation in that term can also be defined as it's a measure without in measurement without instrument so i may have different you know perception of results when i am observing some other person or person b may have different results uh, out of his or her observation so basically there is no instrument based on which we are measuring the uh, by the method of observation so there are different steps that we need to follow when we are um, you know uh, studying the psychology by using observation method one is uh, the step one says we need to observe the behavior so we don't have to speak anything we don't have to see anything we don't have to react on whatever behavior the students are predicting at that time 
all we need to do is we need to silently observe the behavior we need to observe how they are reacting to one particular situation okay we just need to quietly see or listen to whatever responses we are getting from our student the next step is to immediately record this behavior which is observed okay there should not be much gap in observing and recording okay so the recording should be immediately uh, immediately done because we as observer also tend to forget that how the person is going to react or how the person has reacted at that moment or maybe in the class of 25 student it may not be possible for you to observe everyone in the same class but when whenever there is a observation that you need to note you should immediately um, note this uh, in the in the first moment that you are getting okay because it will make the observation more objective now analyzing the interpretation of the behavior once you have recorded uh, the behavior the next is the data is use, useless unless we are getting the results out of it so we need to analyze and interpret the behavior uh, based on the data that we have collected okay we can uh, we have made notes on uh, on the basis of behavior that we have observed observed and this need to be analyzed now analysis can be done again using different statistical or different tools um, that is the, uh, available uh, with the social scientist okay and we can interpret the behavior based on the results that we are getting now once we got the results okay we have performed this uh, observation uh, method on one set of group or maybe on one group of students now can we generalize the same results on the next semester on the next batch that is coming to our uh, class or not okay so based on this first group we generally generally apply the same results to the same to the next batch as well but it is not so that the conclusion that we get from the first batch can directly be applied to uh, to the second batch again the basic reason behind this is we are not dealing with machines okay we are dealing with human so the feelings of first batch or the behavior of first batch may slightly differ from the behavior of second batch okay that is why there are child psychologists they keep on learning they keep on observing the behavior of children and based on this they give their interpretation that why the kind why the student is behaving in such or such manner okay so these are generally the uh, the the environment or the behavior of students are same but yes you will find different students in every batch so here comes again our beauty of our the beauty of our teaching the beauty of um, you know uh, uh, we as a teacher that how we are able to um, apply the results that we have received from the uh, previous batch and how we can improve uh, with the students in the current batch okay and the third and the last method is please come to the next slide it's a experimental method okay so this method is uh, uh, given long back in 1879 by william bones and he established the first psychological lab at lipinzing in germany so he, he was a german psychologist and he has given the first psychology lab when where we where he has started uh, you know um, doing experiments on the basis of people's behavior and human behavior and giving results or generalizing the results based on the uh, the the results that they are getting after the experiments are done so experiment experimental method consists of actions which are performed under pre arranged or rigidly controlled conditions so what happens in experiment since we know that we are doing this experiment so the conditions are organized before handed so everything is prepared okay now what happened it is it's like a situation wherein of sessions are generally organized in university even school is kind of sessions are organized nowadays in schools i'm aware of school i'm not aware of universities as of now uh, there is a full time psychologist who is there in the school nowadays so whenever a teacher observe the student the students behavior is not normal or not as expected they generally consult psychologists how this teacher can handle that student okay because ultimately the results need to be given to that student as well 
Okay, so but the situation when we are talking about this situation, this is a controlled situation. Okay, basically it is a pre-arranged situation. Okay, so when the situation or the environment is pre-arranged and we are knowingly calling some student, asking him some questions. Okay, interpreting on the basis of the answers he or she is given and then generalizing the results, then this is something we call a experimental method, basically. Okay, so JW uh, describes experiment research is the description and analysis of what will be or what will occur under a care. fully controlled condition uh, by randomly giving the situation they are told that you your observe uh, your behavior will be observed and then we actually come to the results based on that Okay, then we try to generalize the results. So the steps that we generally follow in experimental method, are we first identify the problem. We should have the problem that why we are going to what we put on some. Related to distinction between we need to different so what thing if there is variable to show so we need between Variable. Excuse me, ma'am. So, so uh, if uh, there is any question, you are please. Yes, yes. 